I'm Ifis Alaudin. This lesson is about the present simple, present continuous, and stative verbs. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to learn when to use the tenses and how to construct the sentences. Let's get started. Why, oh why do we have to learn tenses? My students will often complain whenever we do grammar exercises on tenses. Hmm. Do you know why is it important? Well, tenses tell you when something happens. And getting the tense right is in a sentence can lead to clarity and better understanding. Tenses, too, can be used to create different meanings from the same verbs and help to make your listener understand the meaning behind your story. Today, we will begin this lesson by learning when to use the tenses. Read the following examples. What are Zuri and Lee Ann talking about? They are talking about ducks. They are talking about facts. So, what tense do we use to tell a general truth or a fact? We use the simple present tense. This is Rina. She drinks milk every morning. And these three boys, they often play online games together. The verb drinks and play both refer to habits that are done regularly. When we talk about actions that happen regularly or about something that is done habitually, we use simple present tense. Simple present tense too can be used to describe a routine that has been prepared or arranged like timetables and schedules. The first train leaves at 6.05 a.m. We'll move on to the simple continuous tense, which is also known as simple progressive tense. Let's see what Uncle Kwan wants to tell us. Here, Uncle Kwan is telling us about his own activity and his friend's actions. What kind of actions is he referring to? He is telling us all the actions that are happening while he is speaking, which are eating and exercising. Let's look at some other uses for the simple continuous tense. This sentence is telling us about an action that is temporary, which means it will only last for a certain period of time. They're not staying permanently in Bangkok, but they're only for a week. Here's another use for the tense. Use a simple continuous tense to talk about a plan for the near future. I am 
taking the train tomorrow. How are we getting along? Feeling confident to use the tenses already? Look at this table. It shows you clearly the difference and the time you should use both tenses. Now, now that you know when to use both simple present and present continuous tense, let's learn how to construct them and write a proper sentence. This is a simple formula that you can use to form the simple present. Subject plus verb to be plus part of the sentence. For example, I run every weekend. He is tired. This table will help you to understand this better. Please note that the difference in the verb when using the third person. Which are he, she, or it. We add the letter S to the verbs that come after the third person. Let me help you to make sentences from this table. I run every weekend. You run every weekend. We run every weekend. They run every weekend. Remember what I said about third person singular? You will see that an S is added to the infinitive. Here's how the sentences should be. He runs every weekend. She runs every weekend. It runs every weekend. The second table shows you the difference when the verb is used. Your sentences will be I am tired. You are tired. We are tired. They are tired. He is tired. Tired. She is tired. It is tired. Next, we move on to the present continuous tense. You can use this formula to form a sentence. Subject plus verb be such as am or is or are plus verb plus ing. Let's form sentences taken from the table. I am running. You are running. We are running. They are running. He is running. She is running. It is running. The verbs we use in the sentences are called action verbs. For instance, run, bake, jump and shout. Sometimes, we also use stative verbs. What are stative verbs, you may ask? Stative verbs do not refer to a physical action. They express a state or condition for things which are permanent, things which don't have a beginning or an ending. Some examples of stative verbs are like, love, believe, know, understand, have, prefer, and hate. Normally, we use stative verbs 
with the simple present form and not the continuous form. I have some pictures to show you. In each of them is an incomplete sentence. What you need to do is, you are going to complete the sentences with either using the simple present or the present continuous tense of the verbs in the brackets. Let's look at the first picture. Intan sleeps early every night, and this shows a habit. So we use the simple present. My mother often tells us stories. The word often indicates a regular action. The men are shouting at each other. The sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. This sentence is about the sun, which is telling a general fact. The wind is blowing very strongly now. The word now in the sentence is an indicator to use present continuous tense. Can you see what I am holding in my hand? Darwish has made a plan for the near future. So we say, Darwish is leaving for Penang this Saturday. Well done, everyone. It's not that hard, right? We'll move on to the next stage that is forming simple present tense and simple continuous tense in the negative form. There are two ways to make a sentence negative. First, we add not before the verb be in sentences. I am hungry becomes I am not hungry. My aunt is a nurse. My aunt is not a nurse. The second way is to add does not or do not before the action verbs to make a sentence negative. They play badminton every day. At do not. And it becomes they do not play badminton every day. She buys a new pair of shoes once a month. She does not buy a new pair of shoes once a month. Negatives in the present continuous are formed by adding not after the verb be in the sentences. For example, you are fighting is changed to you are not fighting. He is lying turns negative when you add the word not. He is not lying. Refer to the table for better understanding. So far, we have learned the affirmative and negative forms. Let's just add one more structure, which is the interrogative form. 
the interrogative is a type of sentence that asks a question and it is easy to differentiate from statements or commands because an interrogative sentence ends with a question mark. The interrogative form for simple present is constructed by beginning it with do or does followed by the subject and the base form of a verb. For instance, Do you cry? Does she sing? And for present continuous tense, the interrogative form formula is verb be, followed by the subject and verb with I and G. Are you crying? Is she singing? So far, we have covered what's essential of simple present and present continuous tense. Can you remember it all? Not to worry if you don't. I've prepared a table to help you revise what we have learned today. Take a look. It will let you see the pattern more clearly. The first one is for simple present tense. It shows all three types of sentences in each tense. Affirmative, which means positive, negative, and interrogative, which ask questions. Next is a sample table for present continuous tense. Go over the rules once more so that you can remember when to use the simple present tense and the simple continuous tense. Then you need to put certain words in the right order to form the sentences properly. Here are the rules as a guide for you. your understanding, let's try these simple examples. You just need to choose the correct answer for each statement or sentence. Let's try a few together. Water boils at 100 Celsius. The answer is C, a scientific fact. We have a dance class next week. The answer 
answer is D. It talks about future actions based on the timetables and schedules. Why don't you do the rest on your own? Think first before you answer.
am sure you are happy with your progress so far. Here's a postcard from my friend Angela. Can you help her to complete her messages by putting the verbs in brackets into the correct form of simple present and simple present continuous? Did you find the exercise useful? Come on, let's check your answers. We've come to the end of our lesson for today. I hope this has been very valuable for you. So, see you again. Bye-bye.